All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bottom Line Live. Tonight, we're going to talk about what bookkeeping and tax items you need to have ready for the end of the year, for the fourth quarter. I know last year or last week we talked about what you need for the end of the year. And now I'm going to specifically talk about fourth quarter. And hopefully that is helpful to you guys. And of course, as always, this is our favorite thing to talk about on Thursday nights. Every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we do the bottom line live. We talk about what you need to know for bookkeeping. It is October. We are in the last quarter of the year. You only have like two and a half months, less than two and a half months left. So what should you be doing? What do you need to be doing for the end of the year, for the fourth quarter? One of the first things that I want to talk about, which I've talked about before and I will talk about again, is 1099s. So if you have not been collecting W-9s from your vendors throughout the year, now is the time to go through your books, find out who needs a 1099, and get them to give you a W-9 if you don't have one. Now, I will do another uh, webinar on this and just go specifically about who gets a 1099 and who doesn't, but I'm going to give it to you guys very brief right now. Any vendor that you have paid more than $600 to or you think you will pay more than $600 to by the end of this year will need a 1099 unless they are a corporation. Uh, but even if they're an LLC, they could be a corporation you don't know. So the way to find out is to get them to fill out a W-9. A W-9 is a very simple piece of paper. It asks for their name, their address, the business name, their tax status, like are they an LLC or their, you know, their business structure, are they an LLC, if they're an LLC, are they taxed as an S-corp, um, are they a sole prop, are they a corporation, their tax ID, which if they are not a sole prop, or sometimes even if they are, will be an EIN, so the employer identification number, the tax ID number, or their social security number, and a signature, and that's basically it. So that's what you need to get. Now, I always recommend getting these throughout the year. So if throughout the year, every time you're going to issue a check or a payment to a vendor, you ask them for a W-9 first, then you won't have any trouble at the end of the year getting these and getting them out. They are due by January 31st. And I'm let me tell you, every year, it's a crazy rush on like January 27th to, you know, get the final ones and get them out the door. So I know for my clients this year, like we probably have to have the W-9s by about the 15th if you want us to file it on time because it gets a little crazy and we have about 150 uh, companies that we're doing bookkeeping for. So that's a lot of vendors for each one. So if you have W-9s, if you have vendors that you are paying, you want to go through the list right now because you might not remember who you hired in January uh, to do some work for you and they need a 1099 by the end of the year. What happens if you don't send out the 1099s? Now, you can be held liable for that person's uh, self-employment tax because you didn't withhold it and you didn't issue a 1099. So if the IRS ever found out about it, they could hold you liable for that self-employment tax for that individual. So that would kind of suck. So we don't want to do that. What happens if you file it late? Technically, you can have late fees. I've never actually seen the, IR the IRS um, issue late fees, but they did just hire, what, like 87,000 new IRS auditors. So late fees are more likely now. I'd recommend filing it on time by January 31st. If you're e-filing it um, and January 31st like falls on like a Saturday or something, then they want you to do it by like the Friday before. So you definitely want to keep that in mind because they have to have time to submit everything to the IRS. Okay, who needs a 1099? So any vendor that you paid over $600 to or you think you will pay over $600 to for services. For instance, if you buy $600 worth of Starbucks coffee, you're not going to issue them a 1099 because you're not buying a service from them. You're buying a product. You're buying coffee and cookies and hot chocolate and pastries, but no services. But let's say you hired a plumber to fix your office bathroom. 
they get a 1099 if you paid them over $600. Um, let's say you hired someone to do your taxes and they're not a corporation, they get a 1099. Let's say you have a company that's doing your marketing, they get a 1099 if they're not a corporation. If you hire a lawyer to help you, they always get a 1099, regardless of if they're a corporation or not, because there's certain rules about that. So uh, that's specifically on lawyers and law firms. They always get a 1099 when you hire them for your business. Obviously not if you're hiring them personally, but if your company paid for it, it's for a business service, you're counting it as a you know tax deduction, then they get a 1099. Also, if you um, have a doctor or medical clinic or hospital or anything that you pay from your company for business purposes, then they get a 1099, regardless of if they're a corporation. I see this most often with lawyers and then uh, with some contracting companies, but I have a law firm who, who has a lot of um, doctors, like they will, they do, I guess, medical or no, what do they do? They do uh, like car crashes and stuff, right? So the the person will come in, they'll send them to the doctor for a checkup, or they'll hire a doctor as an expert witness or something like that. And all of those hospitals and doctors need 1099s. Also, contracting companies, sometimes they send their employees or contractors, they'll send them to the chiropractor or physical therapist, you know, if they have any um, on-the-job injury or anything like that. So those, if you if you send one of your employees or you have your company pay for medical for any reason at all, regardless of the fact that it's probably a corporation, they get a 1099. So keep that in mind. Who doesn't get a 1099? Uh, software does not get a 1099. You know, Google wouldn't get a 1099. Microsoft isn't getting a 1099. QuickBooks isn't getting a 1099. But all of your vendors, if you see all of the, you know, the small businesses that you pay, if they are not incorporated, they all get a 1099. So I'm talking about this now so that we don't have to go crazy and I don't have to be dreaming about 1099s later in the year or in January or on January 25th. There is a lot of bookkeeping that has to get done for the end of the year. So the 1099s is something that I would highly recommend if you haven't done this yet. If you don't have a bookkeeper, go through the list. There's reports in your QuickBooks. If you don't have QuickBooks, you know, you don't have any software for bookkeeping, honestly, reach out, reach out, let's get it sorted out for you because now's the time to make that list and find out all the vendors that you're going to need to give 1099s to so that you're not going crazy at the end of the year because you don't want to be late and you don't want to have the liability of not doing it. So I recommend doing it now. What else do you need to do for fourth quarter? Okay. If you are an S Corp, or you elected to be taxed as an S Corp this year and you don't have payroll run yet because you usually do it once a year, now is the time to find out from your CPA what the payroll estimate is going to be because realize that as soon as you run that payroll for yourself, you're going to owe taxes. So if you haven't been setting aside taxes for that, it's going to be very painful. If you had a you know $60,000 profit and you're going to say, or let's say $100,000 profit, and you're going to say that 50,000 or 60,000 is payroll, 30% of that right off the top, 30 to 35% goes to taxes. So you need to have that available. Um, what is 30% of 60,000? What is it like 20, 20,000? So it could be, you know, 30, 35, 40%. So you need to have that available when you pay that. So now's the time to do the calculations. If you don't have any set asides, Start thinking with it now so it doesn't hurt you at the end of the year. Also, another thing is that all of your taxes for actual annual filing are due March 15 and April 15. So regardless of whether you file an extension or not, the amount due is due on those days. So like my CPA, even when he files an extension, he sends a fat check with it to the IRS. And it's very, very sad very sad to see all my money go away. So I've been trying real hard to put in a set aside throughout the year so that it's not just coming out of one month's income. So the money is there so that I'm not trying to come up, you know, have them do a payment plan or something like that. You want to have money set aside. So keep that in mind at the end of the year that you're going to need that money. Also, start looking at your profit and loss. If you have a large profit 
now's the time to think about what tax deductions can you get? By the time the year is over, that's going to be much harder. Yeah, maybe there's some retirement stuff you can do, but what tax deductions can you get? What are the cool things you can do? There's, you know, the 179 deduction, right? Where you buy a vehicle for business that's over a certain weight. Um, there's different things like you can rent out your property to your company at market rate and get deductions right on that so there's and i'm up to 14 days i believe so obviously i'm not the expert in taxes i just know that i've heard these different things and if you're looking like you have a high profit and it's getting to the end of the year fourth quarter is the time to work this all out don't wait until the year is over and then ask me how you can save money on taxes in fact if your bookkeeping is done, now is the time to get tax planning for the rest of this, for the end of this year and for next year. So if you need tax planning, reach out because now is the time. So many people come to me in January, February, March, like, okay, well, my profit was a lot. How do I save money? Uh, there's not much you can do now. There's some stuff you can do. There is. There's, there's some retirement stuff you can do, you know, a few things. But if you know that you have a lot of profit right now and you would rather pay it somewhere else than to the IRS, then now is the time to work that out. You know, like, okay, you employee bonuses, their payroll, that's tax deductible. Um, you know, you don't necessarily want to buy big equipment because that's not going to be all of it tax deductible this year. Part of it will be, but small equipment, you know, computers, printers are not that expensive anymore. They're only grand or, you know, computers are grand, printers are like 50 bucks these days. That's not going to help you much, but you got to look at it. If you don't have bookkeeping and you don't know what's tax deduct or what your profit is, you need to find that out right now. Don't wait till the end of the year. I have clients who only want us to do their bookkeeping at the end of the year. They had a $300,000 income. They find out they have a $200,000 profit. Why? Because they spent the rest of the money on personal stuff that's not tax deductible. What are they going to do? They have all this profit. There's not a payroll really big enough they can run. There's not enough money they can put in retirement. They didn't do tax planning. What did I tell them to do? Next year, do tax planning. Did they do it? Oh, client of mine? I don't think he did. I think he's asking us to do the bookkeeping again at the end of the year. So that means it's going to be in January to February before he knows what his profit even was. And he's going to tell me again how he's paying too much in taxes. I 100% know it. I'm expecting it. It is what it is. You guys don't want to do that. If you're not, if you don't have a bookkeeper and you're doing it yourself, Still, catch your bookkeeping up right now so you can see what your profit is. If you don't know what your profit is, you can't do tax planning. You can't do tax analysis and estimates. You can't, you're not cause over the situation. You are, uh, you, and if you don't get it done soon, here's what's going to happen. Maybe in March or April, you will sit down. And we've talked about this, guys. You're going to sit down in, in a room, a small room, hide in the closet with a box of receipts, your computer with your bank statements, and you're going to try to figure it out. And if you can't figure it out in March or April, you're going to file an extension, not pay any taxes because you don't know what you owe, uh, file an extension. And then in, in uh, September, October, when you file your taxes, you're going to owe whatever you owe plus the tax penalties and late fees. So do we want to avoid that? I think we do. I, I would recommend it. So how do we do that? We do the bookkeeping now. You know, maybe you just filed your, you know, your 2021 because you just finished and you had an extension. Good. Good job. Well done. Pat yourself on the back. And now sit down and work out 2022. And if you don't want to do it yourself, totally fine. Reach out to me. We will do it for you. And we'll get it done in the next few weeks. You know what I mean? Um, we just hired new bookkeepers. We are ready to take on bookkeeping. Right now is a good time. It's, you know, not tax season anymore. It will be tax season again in a minute. So now is a good time to come in and do that. If you realize that you did not enjoy those three days with the bank statements and the box of receipts, 
I recommend reaching out. If you have a bookkeeper that's doing your bookkeeping, great. Reach out to them and tell them that you want to know what your profit is. Uh, hopefully they have your bookkeeping done at least through September at this point. Uh, maybe even, yeah, you know, if they're doing it monthly, they have it done through September. So you should be able to get a profit or loss and take a look at it. You want to review it. You want to make sure it all makes sense to you. It has to make sense to you. It's your books. They're, your bookkeeper is not attesting to the IRS that these are accurate books. They're attesting that this is the information you gave them and they did to the best of their ability. So you want to review it and make sure it's accurate and before you send that to your CPA. So now's the time to do that. The, the way to not owe money to the IRS or, you know, owe less is to have some control on it and be able to see what the profit is and be able to do some tax planning and make decisions. So that's what I want you to do for the fourth quarter. Get your bookkeeping all caught up for 2022. 2021 should be fully done by now. Figure out what your profit is and make decisions based on that. If you have a lot of profit and you need help, you know, tax planning, reach out to me. I can set you up with a tax planner. If you can't figure out what your profit is or you need help on your bookkeeping, reach out to me. We can help you on that as well. And then next thing to talk about, payroll. So we talked about this a little bit. If you are an S corporation, you need to know one of the reasons you need to know what your profit is so that you know what you owe on payroll. Okay, I'm going to check if I have any questions here in my Zoom. I do not know questions here. Okay, nobody has any questions on the Facebook Live. All good. So what should your payroll be? We talked about this a little bit last week as well. This is really going to depend. It's it's not always the same. It's basically has to be a reasonable salary. So what is that for your company, for your position, for what you do and for your income? That can be something to be decided. It will be, you know, for small businesses, it is often going to be at least 40 to 60% of the profit. That's what a lot of CPAs will say as a rule of thumb. But again, it depends because I have a client who has a $2 million net profit. Are we going to give him a $1 million payroll? No, we are not. We're going to give him a reasonable salary. He got, I think, $150,000 salary. Maybe even $200,000 would be a reasonable salary for you know CEO of a company that has that kind of profit. So it really depends. But if you're a smaller company and your profit is a much lower, you know, 100,000, yeah, 150,000, 200,000 in that case, maybe you want 40 to 60% of it to be salary. But again, you can always do a compensation study. You can work with your CPA. You can see what is fair, you know, market value for your salary. What's a reasonable salary? But you got to work that out now if you do a payroll once a year. I also don't recommend doing a payroll once a year because of the cash flow. If you now run a payroll and you owe twenty to thirty thousand dollars and you have to figure that out ASAP for that payroll, that can be a little painful for small businesses. If you run a payroll once a month and it automatically takes out, you know, three four thousand dollars in taxes, you have that money in your bank. You know what I mean? Where you might not have twenty to thirty thousand left at the end of the year. So that's another reason why you want to know your profit, why that's very important. So those are the things, guys, that are coming up fourth quarter. And you really want to get your end of year bookkeeping done ASAP, like January 1st. Because in January, you're going to have to get, so you want like all of it up to date as much as possible. You want it done through November, you know, so when you go or even keep it up in December so that when you go to do December's bookkeeping at the beginning of January, it's just a little bit of work because now at this point, you're going to have to review everything, make sure it's perfect, make sure you run a payroll, make sure you send out the 1099s, and that's all due by the end of January. It's crazy. January is the craziest month of the year for bookkeepers. For CPAs, their craziest month of the year is probably April and then like September, October. But for bookkeepers, January. January is crazy. Please nobody ask me for time off in January. Please no one get sick in January. That works for me, please, because January is crazy. And uh, there's so much to do. And it all has to get done, fully finished by the 31st. 
So that's why the fourth quarter is so important to do as much as you can, like review everything, keep everything as tight as you possibly can, because you do not want to be pulling out your hair in January. And even for non-bookkeepers, guys, I know how much you love the 1099s. It's not fun. I know how much you love figuring out your payroll and your end of the year planning, you know, in January, right after the holidays when you just spent all your money. I know it's not fun. So do it now. Do it before the holidays. Get it as close to perfect as possible so you don't have to deal with it later. Okay. So you're going to be hearing a lot more from me on 1099s and on payroll and on end of the year stuff. As we get into the end of the year, we will concentrate on specific areas. Um, and if you have any questions or things that you specifically want to know about, please reach out and I will, you know, make it a webinar coming up. And if you want to reach out to me, if you need any help, you need a referral for taxes, you need a CPA, anything you need, reach out. You can comment on here. You can message on my Facebook, on my LinkedIn, on my Instagram, on my TikTok. Check out my TikTok page, by the way. All good stuff. And my email is myatsolvencynow.com. My website is solvencynow.com. You can find me under Solvency Now Bookkeeping on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm everywhere you want to be. And if you need any help, please do reach out because I am here to help you. I want you to have peace of mind with your bookkeeping and your finances. So that sounds pretty exciting to me. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining and I will see you next week, same time, 7 p.m. Eastern at the bottom line live. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.